And uh, so why don't we get right into it? Uh, talking about content, take some notes, take some screenshots, do what you got to do. But I'm yep. going to hand it over to Pia right now. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, and just so you know, this is being recorded and Steve's going to send out the recording um, after this to those who signed up. Um, feel free to share it with anyone that may uh, benefit from it. But hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, it is October 2021, and we are talking about content. Um, so I'm, I'm hearing questions already, like what kind of content? What is content marketing? So we're going to talk about what it is um, and get creative and kind of dive into it. And like I told Steve in the beginning, um, it's going to be kind of a show and tell. So I'm going to give you examples and we're going to dive deep into it. So let's get started. Um, so the three main things we're going to chat about are what the heck is content marketing? People use it loosely every day. And, you know, is it social media? What, you know, what does it include? And why is it so important today more than ever? Um, the essentials of having a content marketing strategy for your business. And then we're going to um, kind of look at what, what content you need to write and how it converts because you can write content till the cows come home but if it doesn't get people to do what you want them to do it's worthless worth not worth your time and money so who the heck am i if you don't know me i am the chief imagination officer and ceo of fingerprint marketing we are a full service digital agency outside of seattle um, i'm self named Marketing Crash Test Dummy. I've been in marketing for 25 years um, and I've tried pretty much everything. So you don't have to spend time and money doing it yourself. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my third business. And I have been, a I can't believe, a BNI member for 13 years, currently with Plateau Partners. Um, and I'm a keynote speaker and a Google fan girl. That means I'm obsessed with anything that gets me ranked on page one. And hopefully that'll translate to your business after today's talk. So we are going to talk about what the heck content marketing means. Um, so there's two, really what it boils down to is it's the creation and curation of content with two goals to get people's attention and to get brand recognition. So the basically what it means is attracting your prospects to your business and turning these prospects into leads. So that's the, the short end of it. Any form of messaging, so video, um, blogging, uh, slideshows, audio, podcasts, we'll go over some of these specifically, um, but you, any kind of content that you create to attract, educate, entertain, inform, inspire um, on your website and on social media, but we're going to focus on your website primarily because that is the hub of your marketing. Um, and why is content marketing, I mean, content is always, has always been king. You've, you've heard this before. Um, and why is it actually more important now since the beginning of the pandemic than ever? A uh, couple reasons, 30% more people due to the pandemic are online today than there were 14, 16 months ago, um, for reasons that I'm sure you can um, assume. People are at home, they're working from home and so forth. So competition is fierce. So people are Googling, they are looking up things, um, and it's, it's really important that if you're not creating new content that your prospects want to read and see, then you're going to be lost to your competition. Um, the second thing that has created more need for good content is seeing our, our audience or our prospects as real. Um, it's not just, you know, spewing out new blog posts and everything, but just actually getting into their minds and customizing your content and really diving deep into what they're looking for. Um, it's also about values. Uh, during the pandemic, we saw some companies do it well, some not so well, um, kind of creating messaging around, you know, we care about our employees, we care about our services, um, we care about you during this, this time of need. Um, so it has been a good opportunity for you to get out there and talk to your prospects about not just your service and products, but what you are as a company. 
And I will say that content marketing is no longer a nice to have. It is not a line item on your marketing budget. It's something you really need to consider at the center of everything. Um, so the one, the one thing is if you're, you know, people have realized that if you're not online, you don't exist. I mean, that's the takeaway from everyone um, after the pandemic. They want, people just want high quality and they want useful, relevant, and engaging. Um, and the real truth, I mean, the real secret sauce here is that the old competition was you were just competing with other, let's say you are a spa, you're just competing with other spas. So the new truth and the new view today is essentially that you're not only competing with your competitors, but you're competing with um, the last best experience that they've had. So essentially, if they found someone on social media, um, you're also competing with all the other distractions in their life. So other websites, family, uh, work from home situations. So that is why it's more important now than ever. Um, some statistics to show you um, when thinking about, well, should I consider content marketing in my marketing tool belt? Uh, content marketing costs 62% less but generates three times as many leads. So think about that. It's 62% less than anything else you're gonna do in your business, but generates three times the leads. 70% of consumers prefer to learn about a product from an article rather than an ad. So rather than a pay-per-click or Google ad or Facebook ad, and four times more would rather have a video than an article. So you can see the trend here. 92% um, of your prospects are going to land on your website and, call, or actually, let me back up. 92% of consumers are going to pick up the phone, schedule an appointment, do what you want them to do um, after they've done 100% of their research. So when you schedule a discovery call or you take an appointment, chances are good that your consumer or your prospects have already done massive research online and know everything about you. Um, side note, this is one of the reasons why with our clients, we tell them to do add an FAQ on their website, um, answering all the questions that they always get. So hopefully I'm not going too fast. I know I'm, I'm kind of just rambling here, but uh, essentially that's what content marketing is. That's why it's important. Um, and I hope the statistics uh, will convince you um, of considering it. So what makes up a strategy of content marketing? What, you know, what are the bones in here? So essentially, uh, there's different parts. There's brand guidelines. There's marketing objectives. Customer personas. Customer journey map content types, platforms, and processes. So we're going to kind of touch on all of these. And I want to give you a couple of examples. Now, don't freak out if you don't have any of these written down or anything there. You know, I have templates if anyone needs them. Um, I'm happy to share. But these are the elements that are kind of like the house foundation of your strategy. So without them, you can very, you can very much create content. You can um, do it on your own, but this will give you a good start. Um, any questions so far? I don't know if we're taking questions at the end or during. Sometimes yeah, I, I, like I have a note these. in there to uh, to do questions at the end. So let's just kind of go through it since we've got lots to talk about. Okay, awesome. So I wanted to just pull up a couple of examples here. Don't mind my tabs. I know I have a lot open. Um, if you were to go to MailChimp uh, style guide at MailChimp.com, this is their content style guide. Now they're a large company. Most people in this webinar are, you know, either solopreneurs or small, very small micro businesses. So you're not going to want something this big. However, it is really interesting to see everything that is covered in a brand style guide. Um, and some of these things you might not even consider, like what is the tone of my business? What is the voice? Am I snarky? Uh, am I professional? Am I kind of, you know, straight up or am I kind of casual? Um, what are the uh, gram grammar mechanisms? So what kind of grammar, what kind of words do we use? 
Um, you know, is there any compliance that I have to take into consideration if you're a bank or financial advisor? Um, so also writing for social media, they have some great um, foundations on how they write for social media. So this is a, actually a great example of a content style guide. Um, and then marketing objectives is exactly what it sounds like. What's your objective uh, when you write a blog post or you post a video or a podcast? What is the objective? Is it to inform? Is it to entertain? Is it to show yourself as an authority? Um, get really clear on what the bottom line is. I, too many times I see people saying, oh, I've been told to do video. I've been told to do blogging. And they just kind of spew out content. Um, really get into the mindset of what is the purpose of each piece of content. Um, customer personas are same thing as avatars, essentially who are, what, who's my perfect client? Um, what kind of things are they Googling? What are some of their problems? Um, where are they hanging out? Um, what are their options? I mean, if I'm one option, what are some of their other options? Uh, for example, um, you know, we have a website development company. So my competitors are other agencies. However, I also compete with Facebook. Um, some people just want to have a, a presence on Facebook or Instagram, and they don't really want to focus on their website. So I'm competing with that. Um, so just kind of think about who your perfect client is. Customer journey map is one of my favorite things to create and something that I really recommend you uh, do. Uh, essentially what it means is when someone comes to your website, what is the journey that you're taking them from start to finish? Reality is you have three seconds minimum and six seconds maximum to capture their attention. You have to tell them who you are, what you stand for, why you're better than anyone else, and give them directions on what to do next. And for some more complicated uh, websites, that can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna show you an example of what we do with our clients. Now, keep in mind, this is a larger uh, organization. This is the Isqua Schools Foundation um, that we're working with and they have a lot of content, but it starts with a sitemap. You're essentially creating uh, different page hierarchy pages and then looking at the pages that get drilled down. Um, so this is the sitemap but you're, you're thinking about, you know, where do you want people to go first? Where do you want them to go next? And um, sometimes what we'll do is we'll take uh, current clients of our client and have them look at the website and ask them if things are clear. Uh, content types, what kind of content am I gonna create? Am I going to create video, blogs, slideshows, podcasts? What, what, content am I going to create? Now, I do always suggest that you try a little bit of everything to see what sits with you. I don't want people to do a podcast just because everyone and his brother is doing a podcast. I want you to do something that's going to be consistent, that you can schedule and be uh, stick to it. Um, again, same thing for platforms. If you are on, on all the platforms, um, you're not going to have enough time to be consistent. Um, and your client may not, your prospect may not be on every platform. So, you know, my clients are on LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, and also Google my business. So your clients may be on TikTok. They might be on, um, Snapchat. They might be on Instagram. So just focus on where you think your prospects are most hanging out. Uh, and then finally content calendar. Your life will be so much easier if you have a calendar. Um, I don't have an example of a calendar right now, uh, but I do have a template if anyone wants it, just, just put it in the Q&A and I can um, send that out to you. Essentially, um, you can go big. You can have a one-year content calendar with some big buckets of, of content. So let's say I wanna talk about SEO in January and I wanna talk about video in February and so forth. And you start with the higher up. The, the big the big picture and then you um, every week it's going to be a different theme and every day it'll be a different type of content and then you can schedule it um, as much as you can create a process around content um, the better so you've developed 
the topics you want to talk about, and then you just fill in the, the blanks. Um, and then the nice thing about this, we do this with restaurant clients, is that you have a calendar that you can refer back to over the years, because there are some types of content that come around every year, like national holidays um, that you want to post about on, on Facebook, or maybe in our case, uh, we talk about the latest trends for 2022 on web design and SEO. So every year we do a new article. So these are things that come around often. So if you have a template that you fit, you fill out every year, um, you have that history. Now you can go back to your blog, blogs and social media platforms and look at what you did in the past, but how cool is it just to have it all already on the calendar and then you just cut and paste for the next year. All right. So I've mentioned a few types of content. Um, anything, again, that's there to entertain, educate. Um, you know, it doesn't have to just be words, but obvi the obvious one is blogging. Um, there's visual content, so slideshows, infographics. Do you see infographics, uh, Steve, these days? Because they don't seem to be around very much, but they're so effective. Yeah, I mean, they are really effective. And we do see them uh, from time to time. I still have clients who use them, but I think it depends on uh, what they're trying to explain. What I'm seeing more is video with, uh, with text, you know, or, you know yeah. overlaid on top of it uh, for people to kind of follow along quicker. So it's kind of the same idea, but yeah, uh, I, much more video these days. Yeah, that's a good uh, point that I actually don't have it in here is uh, explainer videos mm -hmm. um, and slideshows. So that's a good one. Um, case studies are super uh, conversion friendly. So here's an example of a case study uh, and you can use it as a lead generation, like an opt-in to get people's emails. Um, find out how Steve uh, doubled his business by hiring Pia to redesign his website or so hiring uh, fingerprint marketing um, by 50%, something like that. And in order to get the case study, they have to give uh, their email and they'll get the case study. And you write down what the problem Steve had, why his website was crap, how we helped him and what the results were. So yeah. simple, you know, simple formula. People love stories. So, I have been writing more case studies uh, for yeah. clients uh, in the past maybe year or so. Yeah. than ever before, because it's a simple way to say, uh, here's something relatable to probably the same problem you're having. Yeah. Uh, and here's what happened and here's what we did. And people say, oh, I want that. And they'll rush to your website or, or to the phone to call you up. I just thought of something. So case studies is what kind of the vernacular in the marketing industry is, but I would recommend using client stories or customer stories. Because again, yep. people love stories. They love the beginning, middle, and end. Um, and case studies sounds really dry. So uh, client stories, uh, eBooks are still around and guides. People love checklists. Um, again, social media posts are considered part of your content marketing. Newsletters, please don't call them newsletters because Lord knows we don't want to sign up for another newsletter. Um, I call them either updates or um, features or just some, come, come up with something creative um, rather than newsletters. Research and data. So if you're in an industry like insurance or financial advising um, or bank, research and data, get cutting edge uh, numbers. People love numbers and statistics um, to show what's going on in the industry webinars like we're doing here. So what I will do for my business is I will take this webinar and I'll put it on YouTube. I will embed it on my website. I will share it on social media. I will um, uh, create a, what I call an evergreen uh, page on my website where people can watch the webinar um, because it's something that, you know, we're talking about that's going to be valid for the next year and podcasts. I'd love to hear, um, at some point, how many people have a podcast or how many people have considered a podcast. The thing that's awesome about podcasts is you get the visual, you get the auditory, you get the, you get so much more than just the written, like a blog, um, because you can repurpose each episode. Um, you can have it translated so people can read it. You can turn it into a slide, uh, um, 
you can record it. Like I record my episodes on YouTube and put them live. You can create social media, creative gra uh, graphics from it. So there's endless possibilities. So I'm a big proponent of uh, podcasts. Q&A posts and interviews. So that's self-explanatory. Interactive content and tools. Things like quizzes. Things like um, calculators. Um, there's actually lots of tools out there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can um, just put in the information that you want in the tool and it'll create um, some code that you can put on your website. If you don't have a, a web developer or a webmaster, um, feel free to reach out to us because we do it all the time. Um, we embed uh, quizzes. We just did one for a, uh, a Reiki coach today. Um, and they're great because not only does it keep people engaged, but it also keeps people on your website, which translates into what I call Google juice. Um, so Google will see that you have people on your website for longer than normal, right? Because they're interacting and they're, they're, you know, engaged. And then live chat. Um, some people are, you know, they're they don't really like the concept of live chat because they think that they have to man the chat or they have to be the chat person. Uh, there's some great tools out there right now um, I can share later where you just kind of build out your own chat bot. Um, and I say chat bot, but it's not really a bot. It's just essentially someone at ask the question and then you give them options. They can either email, they can either look up um, on your wiki or they can, um, you can give them different options. Now you definitely could man the chat um, and just put your own hours up. But here's the thing, it's no longer nine to five. People are online 24 seven. They're online at midnight, at 2 a.m. They're online all the time. And unfortunately, we're all impatient. We want answers now. And people don't want to fill out an email um, intake form. They don't want to wait and, and hope that it didn't get stuck in spam and hope that someone else is going to answer them, right? They want information right away. So that's why live chat is so amazing. And I know clients that have used live chat to actually sell and close business live right on live chat without even picking up the phone. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Lots of great tools out there. Yeah, I would so, just say, you know, um, this can look like it's overwhelming to someone yeah. with a small business. Don't worry yeah. about it. You can do well with picking maybe just two or three of these things just to get started to see how they work and yeah. test them out, right? And then move around. You don't have to do everything all at once. That is way too much for a small business to take on. Oh, it's totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, I have 10 people on my team, but even, you know, we take it slow and steady. Right. Um, and, but then just realize that if you try something and you don't feel like it's a good fit, it has to be something you really get behind your team really gets behind because consistency is, is everything. Yeah. Um, and most important, I think you have to say like, who is my audience? Who am I trying to attract? Mm -hmm. And which one of these things seems like would be the best way to get to them? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, and don't feel guilty. Like I'm telling you that, you know, blogging was the big thing five years ago. It still works. Um, you know, if you're not blogging or podcasts, everyone has a podcast. You don't want to do pod. I see I can't tell you how many podcasts have been launched and then, then just immediately abandoned. <laughs> About the same as, as blogs when blogging was big, right? People did yeah. blogs, they did three posts and they were done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and webinars, I mean, this all takes time. Um, and if not time money, um, so you want to really kind of, that's why having a, a strategy and really doing the foundational stuff that we talked about earlier is super important. All right. So, um, oh, someone so just asked if blogging is still a thing for SEO. The answer is yes. It is. It is. And I'm going to show you an example of a blog and how we optimize it. So, um, I wish they would change the vernacular because every time I say blog, people are like, oh, that's so 1990s or yeah. 2000s, right? Um, it's not really a blog. It's just, it could be a new page on your website. It could be a new article on your website. Um, if you just change your mindset to creating some new content, because every time you update your website with a piece of helpful information, 
whether it's a page or a post or anything, it will, um, Google will go out and grab the website, re-index it and look to see how you are against your competitors. Yeah, one of the things that I'm working a lot in is um, topic clusters. Yeah. Right? So we've got one topic in mind and it could be any type of uh, format, whether it's a blog yeah. or a video or anything, uh, keeping them all together. Yeah, that's a great, that's actually something I should have included in the webinar. So do you, do you want to talk a little bit about topic clusters? Because they're really interesting. Yeah. So uh, if, let's say your business offers, I don't know, five different products and or services, uh, you want to create content around those five things uh, and do it in a way that gets very specific in the articles that you do or the videos that you do, and then link them all on um, on a pillar page. Uh, yeah. The pillar page is going to be the one that's got uh, you know, like a main article, and it's going to have everything within it uh, linked within your site. So your site is linking from page to page, and Google is going to say, oh, all right, here's a topic that they're an expert in, because there's all these linked pages around it. And this is something that we want to use. Um, we want people to see. And so that's going to get your Google juice uh, going yeah. for sure. So I actually do have an example right here. So this is on our website. This is a pillar page uh, yeah. on website maintenance. Um, and it is at the top of our kind of, this is our main keyword that we, funny, fun fact, we rank number one in Saudi Arabia, the Bahamas, and England for website maintenance. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's like we've, we've gone global, Steve. Um, <laughs> and, and one of the reasons is, well, first of all, we've been in business for 14 years. So, you know, full transparency, it does help that you're online for a long time. Um, but also it's the structure. So when, um, when you are writing an article, some of the things to consider is make sure that your keyword, your main keyword is in, in, in the header. Um, make sure that you are going really deep into a topic. So you have the general topic of what is maintenance. And then there are all these subtopics that you can talk about. And each subtopic has its own headline. And this is, I don't know how many people have WordPress for their website, but this is just a plugin that we use that creates like an index. Um, what this does is it helps Google make sense of your content. Um, I don't know the name of it, but I can get that to you if you're interested. Um, so these are the subheaders. So it's not just what is web maintenance, but um, uh, what is a proper maintenance plan why is it important? What does it cost? Um, what are the advantages? What are the different uh, packages? So it really goes in deep. But the other thing I want to show you is when you're putting a piece of content on here, think of all the ways that someone can consume it. So someone can read it. Someone can watch. Um, this is actually just an Animoto vi video with pictures and text that you can put together in like five minute, minutes. You can do a talking video. You can do an explainer video. Um, checklists, people love checklists. So notice that um, we have these subheaders that are, these are I think H2 tags, um, but then we have bullet points. We have some, you know, white space around for them to read. And we break it up with images and each, here's another Animoto video. Um, you can do an audio clip now. There's ways to do audio clips on, on your website, but it just really goes into depth. I added a little GIF here and then another video. So this is a very long, I think this is 5,000 words. And I know I can hear people going, oh my God, I can't write 5,000 words. Think about your most and what people are searching for to get to your business. What is your number one keyword? And have a page or a post for that keyword. And it could be something that you update constantly. Um, we add new content to this to keep it fresh. Um, but it's just a running, a running article um, that we update when we get new information. This is the stuff that Google is looking for. And then we link out 
um, to different pages on our website. Any questions on that? Um, let's see what we've got going on here. I know we're at the 30 minute mark, so I'm gonna- um, Yeah, why don't we keep going? I've, yeah. got, I've got yeah. a lot of questions in Q and A too, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so just to reiterate what I showed you on that article, headlines and subheadlines. Um, eight out of 10 people are going to read your headline. Only two people out of those 10 are going to click on the headline to go to your website to read your article. So think if you think about that importance of a headline, I would suggest you spend probably 80% of your time writing your headline and 20% writing the article. I know it doesn't seem right, but, um, and then a couple of things about headlines that I wanna make sure that you understand, don't write clickbait because everyone is onto it. They, and, and if you write clickbait and someone has a poor experience on your website, and they're not gonna come back. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna create curiosity. So for example, we're working with a doctor right now um, and one of them is uh, nine ways that vitamin D will uh, shave 10 years off your life or something like that. Number six is a mind blower. So people are automatically going, huh? what's number six? I've got to read this article. Just make sure that number six is really compelling, right? It, it really is compelling. Um, structure and readability. People are on their phones. Make sure that when you are writing articles on your website that you're checking it on mobile because there is a different experience. Um, and you wanna make sure that you give enough white space, you have some bullet, uh, bullet lists and so forth. CTAs are calls to action. So you put up this great article, but you haven't told people what to do next. Um, sign up for an appointment or a discovery call, or perhaps read another article or perhaps take a, uh, a quiz. Um, you need some sort of next steps. Uh, also keep in mind that everyone wants to hear a story. Um, it doesn't have to be your story, but if you think about when you're reading fiction, um, there's a compelling opening, right? Um, and then there's a middle part and then there's an ending. Um, and, and in the end, your goal is to solve their problem. So keeping that in mind when you're writing your, your articles, uh, lead magnets, content upgrades. If you have a lead magnet, which for those who aren't aware of what those are, essentially it's, uh, an opt-in on your website that you give to visitors in exchange for their email so they get on your email list. So, you know, 10 ways to optimize your website for more traffic or 10, um, 10 things to ask your auto repair mechanic before you take your car in, something like that. Um, don't be afraid to put those right in the middle of a blog post because you've got people's attention. Don't wait till the end. And then again, using your senses basically just means video, audio, reading. Um, I wish we had smell, smell of vision, but maybe that's coming with the new Facebook with Meta. Yeah, you know, there you go. Right? Metaverse. Maybe we have like smell coming. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to know people's opinion on the new Facebook name. I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, let's see. We already went over this, I believe. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, okay, so just a couple more things that I want to show you, because um, I know many of you are probably saying there's way too much content as it is. I'm going to get lost in, in, in the mix, and it's too noisy. Nothing I can do or write or put on my website is going to even come close. So I would challenge you to change that mindset. Um, and here are a couple of tips to help you get over that. Uh, first of all, we are all Googling uh, specific problems that we want answers for. I mean, that's just what we use Google for, right? Bottom line. If you can solve a specific problem better than your competitors, then you have that advantage. I would challenge you to go look at your competitors and what kind of content they're putting out there. And it, it, it blows my mind in 2021 going into 2022 that competitors are still not picking up the clue phone. <laughs> they're still not solving people's problems. They're just putting out crap content. So when I say solve the specific problem, 
put yourself in your reader's shoes. What do they want to know? Um, focus again, 80% of your time on your headlines. Go super deep with your keywords. I think I have an example here. Um, yeah, so here's an example. So type in a question that, you know, someone might, might um, type in. I'm just using myself as an example, but you can type in like, <coughs> how do I fix my back or how do I cure a migraine or whatever that might be. So here's some things you can look at. When you put your cursor in the browser tab, look at all of these prompts. So these are telling you that this is what people are searching for around this topic. So these are great prompts for your website. So that's one thing to look at. The second thing to look at is people also ask. This rolled out, I think, two years ago on the first page of Google. Um, essentially, this is these are little snippets um, trying to answer directly a question. And I think I'm in here. Let's see. No, it's in this one. One of these. Okay, maybe not. All right. Nope, I was there yesterday. I don't know why I got knocked off. Anyway, um, so these are just little snippets. So when you're writing a piece of content to solve someone's problem, write it as if you're answering, you're using the question and the answer in the content. For example, why is website maintenance important? So when you're writing the article, you don't want to just answer that question. You actually want to include the question in your content. Website maintenance is important because blah, blah, blah. Hopefully that makes sense. Does that make sense to you, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Because you're writing as if you're having a conversation with your prospect. Right. Okay. The other thing and remember that when people when you look at content, although this is what I do all day, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not insulted when people open up a website and they scan for what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. They don't, not everyone like that huge page that Pia wrote, people only want like one paragraph out of it. Yeah. But if they can yeah. find it quickly, then it's yeah. worth their time. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes too, with those articles, there are questions or uh, information in there that they didn't even think to ask. So that's right. why it's important to be, be thorough. Um, and then- I learned, By the way, I learned a long time ago that uh, sometimes uh, people say, well, no one reads that much content. But what I find is that if people are- uh, researching and they're looking to buy a product, uh, the people who read the most are uh, people who have the money mm -hmm. and maybe the college education or whatever. Um, so if, if that's your audience, then that's what you need to do is write long form content for those people who are going to read your articles and then buy from you. Yep, exactly. And you have to kind of balance it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a balance between making Google happy and SEO and keywords and getting on page one and also your audience. Because if you are writing for just Google, um, no one's gonna read the article because it's gonna be boring. Um, it's gonna be kind of dry. So- it's, it's kind of like in BNI, you know, we don't wanna cast the widest net. We wanna cast the most specific net mm -hmm. uh, to get what we want. So there's way too many people out there for everybody to be your customer. Uh, yeah. getting uh, content that is uh, that speaks to who you're looking to meet uh, as a customer. That's what you have to focus on. Yeah, that's why client stories work so well because they can yeah. they can see themselves in in that story. Okay, yeah. so just so I put my keyword in, in Google and then I'm scrolling down page one. Look at all these. Yeah. Right. So let's say um, look checklists. Checklists are queen. On, mm -hmm. on Google. Um, so then open some of these. Some of these might be my competitors. Open these up. Let's just take this one. So open up your competitor's article. And now we're going to look for a couple of things. We're going to, okay, this is bad practice. Don't have an, a <laughs> pop up right now. <laughs> That's another webinar. <clears throat> um, okay, let's look at this. So we're going to look for a couple of things. Have um, is this a thorough article? Have they covered everything that someone might ask based on um, the, the keyword? 
have they included video, infographics, slideshows? They it looks like a wall of text to me. They haven't included any visual stuff. So hey, I can add that to my article. Um, it doesn't look as thorough as it could be. Um, are there any links to other uh, authority pages outside of the website? Nope, there's nothing there. No statistics, no checklist. There's, I mean, he numbered it, but still visually this doesn't work. So I know it takes time, but you have to remember, these are people that are on page one where you wanna be, where you wanna show up. So taking a few minutes to look at who is getting on page one is gonna be helpful. And then you can go down to related searches and get even more ideas. Okay. No, you just scrolled by your own your own website. What's that? Your your site popped up in those in where you were scrolling. Oh, okay. Finally, <laughs> I know we're on page one at some point, but yeah. Um. Okay. So we talked about that. Oh, okay. I'm going to show you something else here. <clears throat> so everyone, I hope, has Google Analytics on their website. If they don't, it's super easy to add. Um, Google Analytics, it works on the backside of your website and it reports on who's visiting, gives you a lot of information. Now, granted, because of privacy and everything that's happened, you don't get as, you get about half the information that you used to. But what I use it for that I love is I go into reports, I go into engagement and I click on pages down here. And what this does is it tells me the top producing pages and posts that are getting the most visitors. And the reason why that's important is that I can go in here and go, oh, okay, so this seems to be really um, doing well. If, uh, why is marketing important? So I'm going to go in there and I'll put it on my calendar. I'm going to check this article every six months. And it's up to you how often you want to check it. I'm going to make sure this is current that I maybe add another paragraph, maybe I add a new statistic. I wanna definitely make sure that it's not outdated and I'm not recommending tools that are no longer, um, I'm keeping it fresh. So keeping the top like three best articles or pages on your page constantly refreshed is, this is part of why 50% of our traffic comes from cold search um, because we're constantly updating it. So just go to reports, engagement, pages, and look at what people, what are at the top 10. I think you can go deeper, um, but this is a great place to start. Another trick I'll show you is type in the word site colon. Um, let's say you have a large site and you, you have a lot of content, but you don't know if you've covered a certain topic. So I'm going to put in, <clears throat> I need some water. So I, I typed in site colon space, and then I typed in my website. And let's say, so here's an idea. I'm working with some of our clients on ADA compliance. I don't remember if I wrote anything about ADA compliance on my website. I don't want to go through all the pages. So I typed in the keyword. You get rid of all the ads. You go past the ads. Uh, well, I wrote an article on 2018. That's that's outdated. Um, no, it's here's another article. What is what? But there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing on my website about ADA compliance. So I'm going to write an article about ADA compliance. Um, you can also do this with your competitors. So um, typing in your competitors website and then typing in a keyword that you want to get found for and then they'll come up and you'll see oh okay well i'm not going to look at that um let's see here i'm just going to pick an article so i'll go to my competitor and let's say they're writing about website maintenance i'm going to see what they're doing right and what i can improve on so if they wrote an article with 5,000 words, guess what? I'm gonna write an article with 5,500 words and I'm gonna add infographics. I'm gonna just make it better. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can see what's on page one and then just improve it. You can add your point of view, you can add assets. So the bottom line is don't worry about all the information that's out there. I know it's a lot, 
but your ideal client is going to find you if you're, if you have an intentional strategy. Yeah, um, I use that, that Google trick all <laughs> the time, by the way, that, that site colon, because it's such an easy way to see what's happening out there. Uh, yeah, and a really it's, great takeaway for those of you who haven't done anything yet and want to see what your competition's up to. It's a great yep. way. To do. Yep. So again, site, make a note of that site colon space, and then type in your competitor's website. You don't need the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then um, the keyword that you want to be found for. Um, so do some some covert research. Yeah. And then just make sure that anytime you add a new page or a new post, that you're doing basic on-page SEO, which is another webinar. So having a title and a description that shows up on the search results, making sure that your photos are optimized and a, a list of other things. Um, okay, I think that's all I have. Um, yeah, so I came up with a little um, package for you guys. If you're interested in working with us, um, I have a special just for BNI members for a content audit. We will audit your entire website. Um, we will look at your calls to action, your content, your keyword placement, your subheaders, your main headers. We're going to look at your grammar, your um, site structure. We're going to give you a one page um, audit report with actionable uh, items. So you can literally just go down the list and take care of all of the things that we found. Um, and if you're interested, I think Steve has the link. He'll put it in the chat. Already um, in there. Just put it in. Sign up. Yeah. So, um, and you just, all you do is you sign up and you fill out, I think there's like eight questions about your business and you get, you'll get it within a week. So, but wait, there's more. <laughs> um, we're coming back uh, to do another BNI webinar in January of 2022, all about the psychology of video, how to attract and convert more leads next year. So we also have a sign up for that as well. I think Steve's going to put in the chat. Yeah, that is right there. We are going to spend a lot of time in 2022 talking about video because video mm -hmm. is where marketing is moving towards with uh, TikTok and um, Instagram Reels and all those other things. So P will be here. Uh, we'll have Doug Dybert back on uh, from uh, from his company and, and, and talking more and more about video because it's such an important part of your marketing plan in 2022. Yep. And we're going to have some great, like simple video. Like you don't have to have a production company. Like you could just, it's going to be so much fun. So there's so many different ideas that, that you can incorporate. So okay. let's dive into questions. All right. Let's Did see. I miss anything, Steve? Cause you're the content king. Uh, you know what? Uh, that was, uh, there was a lot of info there. And I think that's, you know, for people who don't normally do this, uh, they've got plenty. Uh, okay. I would just say, take it slow. Look at, Look at your site, think about who your customers are, who do you want to reach, and think about each page. What is the goal of this page? What do I want to accomplish with it? Yeah, That's yeah, a simple yeah. way to start. All right, so we have 10 minutes, and then I've got Okay, so let's no. see. Can you send a sample case study or two? I certainly can. Okay. I will send that to Steve, and he'll share that out. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot to share. Uh, you know, links to things and, and the slides and the link to this video for you to share it. Yep. So we'll send everything out on Monday and yep. then I'll give Pia uh, some time to pull everything together. Yep. Um, uh, Carlene says, what if you are featured on a podcast? Is that something that you would use to promote your business as oh, well? Absolutely. Absolutely. The easiest way to do, to take advantage of that is to have um, like in the media or a podcast page where you it's just um you know you embed the podcast that you did that you were a guest on on your website so it shows you as an authority and it builds link juice as well mm -hmm. in the press yes exactly all right uh paul asks uh oh will there be a replay of this presentation posted yes we post this to our bni uh, team usa uh youtube uh, page and uh, I also uh, send out a link for the reminder email that goes out for registrations and we've got all of the November ones coming out next week we'll also have a link to this as well um, okay let's see uh, what can we use to create a quiz on our websites oh gosh there's 101 um, the one I like is called interact it's i-n-t-e-r-a-c 
right? Good to know. All right. Uh, Jennifer says blog stands for better listings on Google. So there you go. She oh, is a blog that's promoter. very creative. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike asks, is there an optimal word count for a blog or article? No. And the reason is because we get obsessed with it and we're like one minute it's 500 words, next minute it's 5,000 words. Answer the question as thoroughly as you can. So get in your client's, your prospect's mind. Did you answer every part of their question when they're searching? So that's all I'll say on that one. Yeah, I agree. All right, Sadiq says, thank you for your presentation. It was informative and engaging. My uh, web design agency prioritizes content that is accessible for individuals with disabilities. Would you please awesome. share how your agency strategically engages individuals who use assistive technologies and adaptive strategies? I would be happy to. We, we uh, have been doing it more and more often um, to comply with the American Disabilities Act. And we use a software. It's just, we generate a little piece of code on the back end of your website. Um, but it's not just one time. You have to continually um, look at the website because you're adding new content, right? And making sure that it complies. So this software does that automatically and you can generate a report at any time that shows that you've passed uh, the compliance. So if you want more information, just reach out to me you, uh, from my website. All right, Catherine asks, uh, I'm a photographer. Would I have a full page of questions and answers or one page per question? Um, a full page of questions and answers, yeah. Similar to the, the sample that you showed. Yep. All right. Uh, any tips on copy? That's my struggle, knowing what to write and how. Catherine, let's I would do a start one to one, what, I would say. <laughs> yeah, start with the exercise of uh, typing in site and your competitor and your keyword, and you're, you're going to get a lot of content ideas. Uh, do you have to use the exact phrases you find in the Google snippets, or can it be just the same idea? Same idea. You don't need to use the, don't, you don't want to, because then you're going to compete directly with those snippets. Right. And, and just to throw it out there, please do not uh, plagiarize. No nope. copy and pasting, because uh, nope. that won't There's work. a million ways to say the same thing. You exactly. just need to put your own twist on it. As someone who has written, I don't know, maybe 75 real estate websites, you have to get creative, but it can be done. Um, so let's see, uh, Leland uh, says the Google form needs to have its permissions adjusted. It won't let us see it. Oh, which Google form? Oh, you mean the, the landing the, the page? The link that we put in, yeah. Okay, I'll have to update that link. Um, what's, what kind of error is it giving you? Uh, Leland, can you type that in either in chat or questions? Because I tested it. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Okay, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, suggestions for attracting possible employees to your website, a form to fill out. Um, that's a great piece of, that's a great idea. And I'm sad that I didn't think about it, but content to um, attract new employees is great. So having a video that maybe uh, you interviewed some of your employees, why they love working there. I did that for a title company recently. Um, or, you know, talking about the benefits of working there. Um, you know, just highlighting different people that work there. So it's a great, uh, great thing to have a page um, on why you should work at your company. 